Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another really impressive three-dimensional map of an intriguing structure created by the astronomers relatively recently, showcasing what's known as the magnetic local bubble, which basically represents the magnetic field or the magnetic structure that surrounds the solar system and everything around us, and to some extent creates this unusual shape that you see right here, that also then produces quite a lot of intriguing effects on the surface of the bubble, that have only been discovered in the last few years. But more importantly, this is an actual three-dimensional map that you can interact with, exploring each of the individual parts and each of the individual structures here, with some of them, some of the individual structures, and some of these individual structures we've previously discussed in separate videos that you can find in the description below. I think one of the more important discoveries in the last few years was the discovery of this unusual Radcliffe wave that you see right here, that represents this unusual ripple-like structure that many stars seem to surf on. The video in the description explains this a little bit better. But this recent map, this recent discovery, is going to help us answer a lot of really old questions about the origin of stars and the influence of magnetic fields in various galaxies. Because this is essentially a magnetic structure. What you see on the surface here, these are magnetic fields. And so what's actually coming from this recent study is the new technique or the new ability for the scientists to be able to actually see the magnetic field on the surface of this unusual local bubble. But I guess the first question is, what exactly is this bubble? And how did it even form? Well, because we're not really three-dimensional creatures and we're more two-dimensional creatures, I love using this map that you can find in the description that sort of shows us what everything around us potentially looks like. This was created by analyzing a lot of data from the Gaia telescope. Now this is in like tens or even hundreds of light years in distance, but if you start zooming in here, you'll discover this unusual feature known as the local bubble. There are a few smaller ones here and there, but the local bubble, or the local cavity as it's also known, is one of many many different super bubbles located in the Milky Way. It's potentially at least 300 light years across and could be as big as almost a thousand light years across. And as this bubble expanded over time, it pushed the interstellar gas away from the center which then collapsed to form new stars on the surface of the bubble itself. The star that you see moving in the middle, that's basically our sun. It most likely entered the bubble about 5 million years ago. And so the fact that we're almost in the middle of the bubble is sort of completely by accident. This bubble existed even before the sun entered it. But it was most likely created by some kind of a pressure from some kind of an ancient supernova that potentially was caused by one of the stars located in the open cluster known as the Pleiades also known as the Seven Sisters. This happened anywhere from 10 to possibly 20 million years ago, and, as you can probably imagine, was an extremely powerful event. So powerful that it ended up creating this several hundred light years across structure. And even though the scientists recently discovered that a lot of stars definitely form along the surface of the bubble, with the expansion of the bubble creating the pressures needed for the stars to form, there are still so many mysteries about this structure, and of course, its effects on the galaxy and all of the stars around us. But in all of the previous discussions of superbubbles and all of the previous models, the magnetic field for the most part was usually ignored. In other words, it mostly focused on the pressure or on the interactions of gravity on much larger scales. But most scientists are aware that this is not the reality. As this map shows us, the magnetic field here is quite prominent and most likely plays a really important role in everything from distribution of gas potentially guiding gas to various directions around the galaxy, or even forcing certain gas to form certain types of stars and certain types of molecular clouds. We've actually discussed various discoveries in regards to magnetic lines or magnetic fields in the Milky Way in some of the previous videos, some of them should be in the description below, but in a nutshell, a lot of discoveries looking at all of this in radio light clearly establish that the galaxies have really huge prominent magnetic lines, which potentially are responsible for a lot of effects we cannot explain. And so even though this particular supernova that happened 20 million years ago created a lot of powerful pressure, the magnetic fields that were created as a result also played a really important role. But what role? Nobody knows just yet. For example, they could definitely influence the overall shape of the galaxy, or at least the overall shape of certain molecular clouds. As a matter of fact, as I've discussed in that previous video, you'll notice that a lot of molecular clouds that produce new stars definitely seem to be located on the surface of the bubble itself but some of them are located in the region with slightly different magnetic fields, at least based on these new discoveries and based on these new maps. What effects this has on these bubbles and how it changes the actual composition of stars and planets formed in there, that's one question nobody can answer just yet. 
and partially because it's been actually extremely difficult to find these magnetic fields and to study them in more detail. And so even though ESA's Gaia telescope can generally pinpoint the exact location of various stars or various really bright objects, it's not able to see the magnetic fields or anything in radio frequencies. And so instead the scientists had to rely on some of the older data from the Planck spacecraft that became really famous for creating the most accurate map of the cosmic microwave background. So it was actually able to see microwaves. Which means that it was really good at looking at microwave frequencies. Frequencies that are somewhat relevant when looking for magnetic fields as well. With the data from the telescope being able to see some of the polarized light produced by various magnetically aligned dust particles present on the outer surface of this particular bubble. And in this case, the magnetic alignment of the dust particles allowed the scientists to then see the orientation of the magnetic field visible right here. And so when looking at some of the data from the Planck telescope, they were able to see all of this dust on the surface of the bubble with a lot of the dust pointing in different directions because of the magnetic lines. Which confirms another assumption that as the bubble expands, the magnetic field seems to be swept up on the surface of the bubble and expands along with it. Which by itself is also a really important discovery because it definitely confirms the influence of magnetic fields in galactic evolution and in star formation. And today when using various computer simulations or supercomputer simulations in predicting the evolution of molecular clouds and star formation, most of these simulations generally ignore the effects of the magnetic fields. And not because the scientists don't want to include them, but actually because it's extremely difficult to implement them because our general knowledge and understanding of these phenomena is, at the moment, extremely limited. We still have no idea what effects this all has on the galaxy and the production of various stars in various clouds. And so hopefully this new discovery will serve as the foundation for some of the new studies, specifically focusing on the effects of magnetic fields on star formation in various superbubbles. We probably still are not going to be able to model it just yet, but at least now we can sort of observe it, discovering what effects the surface of this bubble has on several different molecular clouds that exist around it and are visible right here. And so by trying to combine these observations with the observations of various types of star growth, we might be able to finally figure out how these magnetic fields influence the evolution of various stars. Which is of course not something new and not something that we didn't know before. For example, several studies have already discovered that various types of wind shock and of course the effects from the jet itself dramatically changed the formation of stars in just a few thousand years. And in certain systems, some of the stars get these tremendously large jets which dramatically change what the final star is going to look like. And all of this directly depends on the magnetic fields around the star and the cloud itself. This particular object known as the HH object is particularly mysterious and you can learn more about it in the video in the description. And so hopefully in the next few years as we get more data and as our observations become more complex, some of the new studies can finally start combining gravity, magnetic fields and a lot of other interactions in various galaxies and resolve some of these issues and find the explanation for a lot of these mysteries of star formation. But as of right now, the entire field is still in its infancy. These are exciting observations, but there are just very few explanations as to what's really happening here and what created all of these shapes or what's going to happen to them in the next few millions of years. But we'll definitely talk more about some of these discoveries in future videos as well. Especially because I love finding these maps because this is literally like Age of Exploration once again. Even though we sort of mapped planet Earth, we still have so much mapping to do in our galaxy as well. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.